Hope you missed us. We're back. You know, it's always amazing to me. And, you know, it's 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 getting to the point where it's downright funny. Like, Dabble's Anonymous. These people are such blatant fools that it's like, it's almost incomprehensible for a man of my intelligence to ingest. I mean, they lie about everything. Everything is a lie, which is why I don't go on there. But today I found it funny. I was laughing out loud at the myriad of ridiculous (laughs) hypotheses about me. To make a... uh, Long story short, what happened to me yesterday was not a sign of alcoholism, was not me being inebriated, was not about too much drinking, too much partying. No, what happened to me yesterday was simply COVID. And I should have known because I've this is the third time I've gotten COVID. The first being when I was out in New York. I got it from my niece at my brother's house during Christmas time. The second time is when Danny and Dawn gave it to us in Atlantic City. And then finally, this time. And I should have known what really was going on. I was around one o'clock completely exhausted. And I had a diet, I had a Mountain Dew, and uh, usually that wakes me up. It didn't, just made me even what appeared to be drowsier. But the only problem with that is that I just didn't feel right. I felt like out of breath and nauseous and dizzy, and that's why I threw up. Had nothing to do with my boost drinks. I'm not throwing them away. I'm not throwing away my pretzels and hummus. It wasn't food poisoning. It was simply COVID. But I love how all of you losers in this chat could not withstand from saying that it was alcoholism, which is... Your go-to, isn't it? Because you don't have anything, so you must find something to cling to to make yourselves feel better. And the hypocrisy comes in when you think about most people in this chat, drink beer just as much as I do. Probably even harder alcohol. But for some reason, they seem to take the moral high ground and try and take jabs at me because I'm willing and honest enough to have a few beers on this show. Not now. It's 10.30 in the morning. I'm not an alcoholic. But... You love to relish in the assumption that somehow I'm an alcoholic. And you have at it. Have at it. I just got my liver checked. Blood work done. Tip-top shape. How is that possible? How is that ever possible, I ask ye? How is that possible that my liver is in perfect shape? How is it possible that my blood work was impeccable? My blood pressure impeccable? Cholesterol levels? Everything. However, can that be possible? Well, I'll tell you how, because this 
This is the beer I took out yesterday. I didn't even drink it. That's how sick I felt. I took one beer out. Notice it is still closed. Now, you would think a true alcoholic would have had to drink come hell or high water. But no, I did not. Instead, when I stopped the show, I lied down on this couch, grabbed my blankie, had the shivers, the chills, and and I just lied on the couch, tried to sleep. My head was fucking aching. And then at 621, I got out of the couch, took a piss, and lied on my bed for hours on end. Unable to sleep, my head pounding like crazy, sweating profusely. And finally, at 11.30 last night, the fever broke. My clothes were drenched. Of course, someone in Dabbles Anonymous says, oh, well, John, why don't you get in your pajamas? Now, I ask you, who the fuck wears pajamas anymore? I stopped wearing pajamas in elementary school. Who the fuck wears pajamas? But these is, this is the rationale from the internet sleuths, Brian, at Dabbles Anonymous. They come up with these falsehoods to make themselves feel better about themselves. So, yes, I did sleep with my pants on. I was freezing. That's what you get when you have COVID. Get chills. Had the blanket covered head, almost head to toe. And I wanted the fever to break anyway. Finally, I took the pants off and left the shirt on. And uh, boom! The fever broke. And I felt better. And I feel a lot better now. Probably shouldn't have done my three sets of push-ups today. Because I did my arms yesterday. I wanted to start on the chest, but not ready yet. Not ready. Still a little weak. I didn't eat anything yesterday of any note, except for the little thing of pretzels and hummus and then one boost and a diet Mountain Dew. That was about it. So this morning I got up, did some push-ups, had some bacon and eggs, no bread, some OJ. Took a shower, had a shave, and I'm here to entertain all you people. Now, there's a lot of LOL cows that we're going to goof on today. It's going to be a jam-packed show, which is why I started a little earlier. Not the blatant money grab that Brennan did this morning. I mean, Brennan, how much money do you need, bro? Kevin Brennan went on at like 8.30 in the morning or something. S seriously stupid. Why? Because he wants to... It's just a blatant attempt at a money grab, which is so lame. He already makes the most money, right, Kev? Isn't that what you said today? You can do a show alone? Calling me a hypocrite? Kev, you do a show alone every once in a while. I do a show alone almost every single show. You need people to beat on, to make yourself feel better. I don't. I don't. At least not live. I would have. I would have taken on the shit wear and Silent Mike and that hack Bob Levy and Log Cabin Larry and White Trash, Producer Phil. But you guys wussed out. But you didn't want to take me on. So today, I'm going to fully expose Silent Mike, Shitwear, Lady Kmart, 
Casey Armstrong, and Vinny, the Moonhead, Paulina. And this will be a very, very methodical takedown of these losers that really have accomplished nothing in life. Nothing. Yet, feel the need to mock me at my many achievements. But that is to be expected from those that are jelly. And they are jelly. And we will take a walk through this very methodically. Ah. Of course, on Dabbles Anonymous, they say me getting COVID is a karma thing. Well, uh, well, let's see. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. We are going to do this. Just remember that I had COVID the third time. COVID is not karma. Getting beaten up by a guy with nunchucks is karma. Having quadruple bypass for being a total racist, homophobe, transphobe, and anti-Semite is karma. Getting a 12-hour bout with COVID is not karma. That's like, at this point, for me, since I'm vaccinated, is like getting the common cold. We're going to talk a little bit about Aaron Rodgers as well, who was also involved in the Sandy Hook conspiracies, like Alex Jones. Aaron Rodgers, you're an idiot. You take your doctoral advice from fucking blockhead steroid freak Joe Rogan. You should be banished from the NFL. Calling those kids that were murdered actors. You're a dickhead. The Jets should drop you. The NFL should fucking ban you. You're done. So leave. Don't let the door hit you in the ass. So I didn't have time really to get into it yesterday as I felt like shit. So here we go. Okay. This is Silent Mike and Shitway are talking about Silent Mike's credits. A writer for The Tonight Show with Jay Leno they are all losers with wow. fake super chats and fake gifted membership. Well, well, if I may address this, please. Uh, sure. Yeah, um, honey. Which I'll take part? Care of this. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll take care of my part. Uh, yes, I yeah. was a writer on the Tonight Show, and John, I keep asking you, let's compare monologue jokes. I okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. He still claims he was a writer on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Now, let's see. Let's see exactly what, he, in his mind, a writer is for Jay Leno. Okay? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Now, Silent Mike, I want to show you something. Silent Mike, this is the Writers Guild of America West. And as you can see right here, I wrote for The Tonight Show and The Jay Leno Show. You can see I'm a WGA member. Silent Mike. 
Why don't you have that? Why do you claim to be a writer on The Tonight Show, yet you don't have any credits to be a writer on The Tonight Show? I digress. So, Silent Mike, let me ask you this. Silent Mike, this is just a small sample of all the bits, segments, drop-ins, and cold opens that I got in to The Tonight Show in one year. Okay? As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, that is a huge pile of approved scripts by The Tonight Show. And if you can make out the little t thing, this four black, it says J. Mel. Meaning I came up with the idea, wrote the script, directed the actors. That is all me in just a year. We'll continue this takedown of Silent Mike. So, bear with me here. This is very simple. And um, it's quite amusing if you think about it. But it, it gets it gets it gets funnier as we go along. So this is the proof that Silent Mike is going to show us of how he was a writer on The Tonight Show, right? So let me find exactly what I'm looking for here. Uh, let's see. Uh, na, 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 na. uh, let's see. Uh, where is it? I'm sorry. Uh, I got to find his big check. Okay, hold on. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Fucking hell. I, I thought, oh, here it is. Okay. So, so in other words, Disco Bob has already proven me so this is what Silent Mike is talking about. A check from Jay Leno, Big Dog Productions. Now, now, so, because they're saying Silent Mike, uh, let's find this, let's find it. Uh, I'm looking for the actual Silent Mike check. Bear with me. Bear with me. Now, here's another thing. On the Writers Guild website, not one Mike Morse. How is that ever possible? How is that ever possible? But we could easily just go like this. And we could go like this. And then we can go like this. And we can go up like this, and we could go to here. So old Pat Silent Mike shows with his $5 check from Jay Leno to prove he was a regular writer for The Tonight Show. Now, ladies and gentlemen, okay, now, now, I want everyone to look at this very closely. What you're seeing here is a check. It's probably for $75, maybe 50 Now, what this is, ladies and gentlemen, is a check for a freelancer, meaning a check for a faxer, for a guy that faxed in jokes, and maybe, just maybe, 
gets one joke in per six months. That is what's known as a faxer. And that there's about, they had about 50 faxers. Okay. So when Silent Mike makes these false allegations, he only makes a fool out of himself. It is very, very, very funny. Because you can see here on the top of the screen from my tweet is the credits for The Tonight Show. What does it say there? Written by John Melendez, Steve Ridgway, John Romeo, Dave Rogowski, Jeffrey Spear, Troy Thomas, Jim Wise, Rob Young. Now, Silent Mike, if you were a writer, let me be more specific. A staff writer on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. You would have been in the credits. You would have gotten scripts in. And you would be on the WGA website. Now, let's further elaborate, shall we? Let's say, because Silent Mike seems to believe that he was somehow one of the greatest writers for The Tonight Show, which is an insult to all of us great writers that wrote for The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. And there's not one of those guys on there that weren't great. But let's just assume for a moment he was that great as a writer on The Tonight Show. Well... I'm going to throw two names at you, Silent Mike. Mike Rydell, Jim Shaughnessy. Now, they were faxers. How is it, Mike, that Jay Leno, Jack Cohen, Joe Medeiros thought so highly of them, they gave him a full-time staff writer job, yet they never gave you that. I rest my case, Your Honor. If you were that valuable to Jay Leno, they would have offered you a staff writer position. But because you got in an occasional joke, making your 50 bucks, Change it later on to 75. You think that you can call yourself a writer on The Tonight Show? (laughs) You are as delusional as you are stupid. And this is very easy, this takedown. Because the proof is in the pudding. I not only am credited on the WGA website, which in fact pays my pension and gives me my benefits, I am also on the credits on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Is your name anywhere to be found on either one of those vehicles? No, it is not. So let's watch your... More of your moronic reasoning. I have have all of mine, but I have a bunch of them. A bunch. So far, we've seen one. Jokes. I have have all of mine, but I have a bunch of them. And we can just see which ones are funnier. I know you didn't actually write any monologue jokes. Oh, really? Silent Mike. Silent Mike. I got plenty. Plenty of monologue jokes in. Plenty. And yes, obviously mine were funnier 
because I was paid, picked up every single fucking time they had to pick me up. I was very valuable. Jay Leno would pull me aside. Jack Cohen. Joe Medeiros, when he hired me, hired me to be a staff writer as well as announcer. So I ask you, Silent Mike. How do you come up with that false allegation? Is this from sheer jelly? Is this sheer jealousy? Or you just like to lie, like you say you're dating my mother? You apparently have a long history of lying. They gave you the busy work, like they like the baggers at the supermarket. Oh, yeah, no, I don't think so, Mike. I was fucking working fucking nine to nine. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. Keep them busy. And, Stalker. Uh, yeah. And uh, and all. <laughs> Stalker. Look who's talking. Look at shitware. Now, look at the shitware. He's calling me a stalker. Isn't that a gem? The shitware called into the Stern show for 10 years trying to get on the air. And guess who would put him on? Me. Now, I've never called into a radio show unless I was scheduled as a guest. But shitware, oh, he was calling in every day. So who is the stalker, shitware? Who is the stalker? You guys love projection, don't you? Also, I uh, I uh, was uh, hired and actually got paid by the uh, by the Howard Stern show. Actually, hired. Okay, we, I can't wait to show you this one. Hired and paid by the time by the Howard Stern show as a writer, not uh, making potatoes or cleaning. Okay, as a writer, now he's going to say not cleaning sh shit off his shoes. Apparently, I guess weighing weighing shit is higher up in the Silent Mike um, tra trajectory. A writer not uh, making potatoes or cleaning shit off anybody's shoes. That is true. That's true. Mike was a go-to guy. Go-to guy. Okay. Hey, we'll just watch the end of this. Remember, go-to guy. Like, I don't oh. think you even knew I, I got it when I went, like, I was walking in the office one day. You're like, what the fuck are you doing? Okay. Silent Mike. Let's go. Stop screen. Let's look at how many Howard Stern shows you wrote for. Let's see, Mike. Oh, this is so easy. Okay, Mike. Let's embarrass you some more, shall we? Let's embarrass you some more. This is so easy. But let's go. Silent Mike, this is going to hurt you more than it hurts me. Sorry, I don't know what happened. Okay. This is Silent Mike's writing credits. Now, look at his writing credits for the Howard Stern Show. Remember, Shitwear said he was a go-to guy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, how many episodes... Did Silent Mike write for the Howard Stern show? I'll let you read it. I'll let you read it. Thank you. Two episodes. Two. Two episodes. But he was a go-to guy. Right shit where? This is way too easy. Then he wrote for Sunday Night Baseball, one episode, and then Ring Rose, he wrote for himself. That's it. That's all of Silent Mike's writing credits. 
Yet he has the audacity to actually compare himself to me. Now, Silent Mike, let's look at my writing credits. The Tonight Show with Jay Leno, 209 episodes. The Jay Leno Show, 21 episodes. One too many. Howard Stern Radio Show, that was a CBS show. And Howard Stern Show writer, 2,200 and 65 episodes. Want me to do this again? 209, Tonight Show with Jay Leno. 21, The Jay Leno Show. A movie. The Howard Stern Radio Show, uh, the CBS Show, 1998. And then The Howard Stern Show. 2,265 episodes. So, Mike... I think it's fair to say that I am and was a real writer for The Tonight Show with Jay Leno and for The Howard Stern Show, but you weren't. So I ask you, Mike, don't you feel stupid? You'll probably say no, because stupid people are too stupid to feel that they're stupid. But I think I've thoroughly proved my point that you are a fucking idiot. You have no writing credit of any significance. You were a freelancer. Hey, listen, people. Our stage manager, Mike Schiff, got one or two jokes in as a freelancer. And he's a stage man. He has the same check for $50 and or $75. So to say that you were a writer on The Tonight Show is a fucking embarrassment. You, Mike should be fucking embarrassed. I would never say that if I was a freelancer, a faxer. And again, if you were that good, you would have been hired, but you weren't. And you go back to me making the potato. Well, Mike, you see, when you started out on Stern, that was how you got your foot in the door. But then I excelled, propelled myself to being one of the main characters on the Howard Stern Show. You, no. Shit wear, no. I parlayed my success from Stern into movies, network TV shows, and fucking animated series and animated films. You did not. You guys are losers. I work the best clubs. You do not. I work the improvs. I work. I don't want it. Nope. Go away. I did not order anything. Go away. I'll call the cops. Go away. I said go away. I didn't order anything. Go away, I call the cops. Vince is going to try all he wants. I'm not answering the door. Vince, I get it. You're in love with me. But it's over. It's over. And don't tell me I'm being mean. This is my fucking place. I pay to rent. I don't want to be bothered while I'm doing a live stream. And this fucking guy don't take fucking no for an answer. I say, go away. He says, give me your ID. (laughs) So I don't want to fucking hear 
Oh, John was being mean. No, I don't want to be bothered by Vince. It's Vince that's being mean. Vince, I know it hurts you, but you're dead to me. I told you that already. And now you're expounding on your fucking insults by now posting pictures of Army Mage's wife and his children. You've hit an all-time low. But wait for it, Vince. Wait for it. Because it's coming. I'm not going to tell you what's coming, but it is. But it does involve the bar and not Pickwick Pub. I'm talking in the bar. You don't know. I guess you don't. I guess you have. I guess you are not familiar with all the rules about being a lawyer. Johnny Payton. Thanks for the two bucks, bro. Vince, a lawyer, showed he his daughter and made fun of her looks. I know. I know. And he thinks that that is somehow a good look for an attorney. It ain't. Funeral director. Said Vin and me, Link, brother, work this out. I'm not working it out. Vince is dead to me. We no longer friend. We enemy. I don't watch his show anymore. I don't care about him. I don't want to know anything about him. He had his chance, and he blew it. Guy's still out front of my door. Let's see. If he knocks again, I'm calling the cops. I am. Vince is the one putting him through this. Not me. I'm sure whoever Vince is ordering this through, they're talking to Vince. Vince says, keep knocking. I'm not getting out of this seat. Malibu comic books. Thanks for the two bucks. Bed, cut, and coke. I don't know what that means. Mike V. I watched Vince Lawyer and he was talking very nice about you. I don't care. Vince, it's over. I don't care if you say I'm the biggest scumbag in the world. I don't care. Say whatever you want. You're dead to me. We fine. We fine. No more. No mas. Do you understand that? Very simple. We're done. You get it? Johnny Payton. COVID. Dummy urine. Alky like Ray embrace it. You see? They don't want to believe that I had COVID. I might still have it. I got to go to the CVS after this and get tested and then um, get my amlodipine for my high blood pressure. Penis wrinkle. Thanks for the two bucks. You've been hospitalized due to alcohol before. No. Nope. Nope. RP, thank you. <laughs> John made more money than the shit network yesterday as well. I was only on for 38 minutes. Stuttering John fan clubs on a mission. I heard the knees knocking yesterday over at the shit network. What can they do about the king? What can they do without the king? Nothing. That's why it's so funny. They sit and do show after show about me. Yet without me, they're dead. But they're dying anyway. People are sick of the same old, the same shit every day. So much of the same shit, surely should weigh it. Mike V, thanks for the two bucks. I can tell Vince Lawyer really likes you. Please call him now. No. No. Johnny Payton, number eight, thanks for the two bucks. You're an alky, your friends, Karen and Dan, love snorting coke. Nope, that's just more lies from Vince. And Vince is going to get his comeuppance. Wait till I start. Well, I'm not going to say what I'm going to do. Hey, Mom. Great, you're feeling better. Bye. Yes, I am. Mike V. 
What can I do to get you back with Vince the lawyer? Nothing. It's over. We're done. He blew it. Old Craig. And he doubled down a number of times. He could have backed out of it, but he didn't. Because that's Vince. He thinks it's funny to be a troll. It's not. Not really. Not when you're hurting my friends. Even though they don't give a shit about you, Vince. As much as you like to think they do. They don't. They don't care about you. But I care about people fucking my friends. I do. Don't worry. We have plenty more people to take down today. I'm just getting started. Old Craig, member for a month. <laughs> Glad you survived your COVID hangover. Can you play the song, Oh, Susanna, with your hand on? Oh, wait, can't wait for Shuli's special guest. Oh, okay. RP. Glad you're back at it. F. Shuli the hack. James O'Sullivan. Got liver enzyme report from Doc. Easy win, my man. Scooby Skeev. Thanks for the two bucks. You are so boring now. Views going down lately. That's okay. I don't really give a shit. Del Dog. Did you bleed through the pants you slept in? No. Ziggy Kruger. Truly raised 20K for Suzanne interview. Kumia threw in 5K. What you reckon her price is? I don't know. Mike V. I gave up Cosby to get you and Vince the lawyer together. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mike V. Seriously, what can we do to get you and Vince the lawyer back? Are you really do keep doing this? Johnny Payton, thanks for the two bucks. Someone should go to Susanna Workplace to interview her. Why is everyone so concerned with my ex-wife? We haven't been together in 13 years. But I see why. They're just trying to make me angry. I don't really give a shit. It's her life. I would not. I would not. I would not I recommend her get involved in this. But that's just me. Uh, thanks for jokes. What's for lunch? I just had bacon and eggs. I, I don't think I'll be having a lunch. Penis wrinkle. 12. Thanks for the five bucks. The lack of sleep and night sweats is textbook alcohol withdrawal. If you didn't drink yesterday, that makes sense. How'd you get over COVID today? It makes no sense. That's what happened when I got back from Atlantic City. That's what happened when I had it in New York. Dave, Sarah, I'm, I'm vaccinated. It makes sense. If you're vaccinated, usually you have symptoms for a day. Then it goes away. Pickles is great. Let's do some carom tonight. Thanks, Dave. Uh, let's see. Malibu comic books. Thanks for the two books. Kate is amazing. So tight. Valley Coke has bad cut. Okay. Johnny Payton, eight. Thanks for the two bucks. How embarrassed are you that Vince Lloyd goofed on Major's family? I'm not embarrassed at all. James O'Sullivan, thanks for the two bucks. Idea, all grunts episode. Fun, evergreen, on brand. Uh... Hey, Proman. Any weight loss advice from for me, really fat friend Zen? Yes, duct tape on your mouth. James O'Sullivan, thanks for the two bucks. Get fourth and fifth vax, man. Why risk it? You're eligible. Yeah, I know. I got to do that. I didn't even get the third. I got the first two. I got to get three, four. Is there a fifth now, too? I, I got to get it. Uh,. See, penis wrinkle 12. Are you boosted? 12 hour COVID doesn't exist on me. Okay, it exists for me. Don't I seem better than I did yesterday? Danny Thomas loved hookers shitting in his mouth. Thanks for five bucks. 
When will Major and Brian Karen be back on the show? Don't you wish you knew it? James O'Sullivan, thanks for the fiver. I'm at tonight's show ride at Universal again. This really pisses me off. They still don't have you up in the show history room. Should I not ride? No, it doesn't really matter. I don't care. Victor Mature, thanks for the two bucks. No one knew Mike Morris by the nickname you gave him. Ghost of Ralph Melendez, thanks for the fiver. You're just an angry boy mad at your stepdad. I think you're jealous of Silent Mike because of the sexual healing he's providing Osa, Skull. Man, you guys really write just as well as Silent Mike. Old Craig, thanks for the fiver. Karma has already got you. Your family left you. Not really. Spoke to my son last night. You live in a terrible apartment. Not really. And your mom is getting down by Silent Mike. <sighs> yeah, Vince. Thanks for the two bucks. I get it, Vince. I know this is you. You make a great comedy writer. I know, Vince, it's... We all know this is you. I mean, you, you don't think you're fooling anybody, do you? EJ, TSN, World Order, Total Domination. Yeah, let's all give it for the puppet. Nada! Nada! Mike Morse's $50 check. Wow, comic legend. Victor Mature. I used to fax jokes to Big Dog in the 90s. James O'Sullivan. Thanks for the two bucks. How you spell that second name? I don't know what that means. Boschetti Tooth Chad. Thanks for the fiber. So you proved Mike was a paid writer. No. I proved that he got 50 shekels or 75 if he got one faxing joke in. That's not a staff writer. That's what's known as a faxer. Or even more embarrassing, a freelancer. And they will get in a, one joke every six months, get their $75, take the check, put it in a frame, and claim that they're a writer. That's what they all do. But if they were good enough, they'd get hired by the show to be an actual staff writer. Maybe he didn't get hired because it wasn't in budget because Jay wouldn't fire you. Yeah, well, then why did Mike Rydell get hired? Why did Jim Shorganacy get hired? Hmm, go figure. DK, thanks for the two bucks. Are you going to cure it with Veal Parm and NyQuil? Nope. Silence, do good. Thanks for the fiber. Letting John write is the equivalent of giving a toddler a rag to clean the cabinet so they can feel like they're helping and stay out of the way. Thank you. If only you saw my, if only you saw my writer's reel. I got plenty. Yep, your mom's box, DK. Yeah, Vince. John, I love your show. You have me on. No, I'm not going to have you on, Vince. Nate G. Rogan and Rogers don't have COVID. Boom! Daniel August. Producer Joe hacked your laptop camera. Is watching you right now. You should cover with duct tape right now to show him who's the smart one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Boschetti Tooth Chad, thanks for the two bucks. How was being hired as a writer a job you never did? Well, I got plenty on. In fact, I made President Obama laugh with one of my drop-ins. <laughs> also wrote questions for Jay for President Obama when he was a guest. Mason in Portland, because I was in the briefings. Next to Jay, I was the only writer in the briefings. You understand? That's right. Boy, did I get stuff in. Mason and Portland, thanks for the fiber. John, when I'm in town, let's get drunk at universities, go on the Jur Jurassic Park ride. DG will join us. He'll be our chauffeur. Sounds good. Vince, if you had a meet and greet with Vince Loya, I'd go, why, you'd meet yourself. Gabe Ephes. John, see what happened to, on the A train? No. Boschetti Tooth Chad, how do you how do Howard Stern writer feel about you getting IMDb credit? Howard knows I wrote plenty of stuff. 
Vince the evil lawyer. Send link so surely loses bet. 500 with Bob. No. KMAC 3344. Thanks for the fiber. You and Morris write a, a used E song about each other. Real judges, 10K to the winner. You'll get crushed. Okay, you got it. Mike V, I will send you a Hyundai. I will send you a Hundo to have Vince Lawyer on now. Nope. Vince Lawyer is dead to me. There's not, yeah, if he paid me a thousand. I would let him on. Bochetti Tooth Chad. Thanks for the two bucks. So when you ever tell or write a new joke, I write them all the time. Britain, thanks for the fiver. John, I've watched you online for months. I've yet to hear you tell a funny joke. Hell, not even one funny line. Who are you trying to bullshit? This is a talk show right now. I'm not, uh, I'm not writing jokes right now. James O'Sullivan, thanks for the two bucks. Why not just tell a delivery guy to keep the order? Uh, yeah, like he's gonna understand that he he couldn't even understand. Go away, vamos, vamos, Mason in Portland. Thanks for the fiber, John. It'd be good luck to accept Vince Deloy deliveries and go out and give to the homeless. Maybe record it for members only content. I don't know. Naga, naga. Thanks for the two bucks. And Vince Deloy sent DD to women every day would be stalking. I, I agree. If you don't direct them, raise the hand if you would do Dick's daughter, KC for Prez. K Mac, he showed a commercial loser. Kel Nares, thanks for the dollar super sticker. Silence, do good. Thanks for the two, bro, two bucks. Perfect help with high blood pressure. Okay, John. Yeah, I take high blood pressure medication. Although I don't always need it. Chris Vap, thanks for the two being a member for two months. <laughs> I'm a member. What am I getting from a membership? Should you take down the shows? I will not be renewing since I got nothing. Bullshit. I just put the last three up just for members. So fuck off. James O'Sullivan, thanks for the two bucks. What's your favorite super sticker? I don't know. Pochetti Tooth Chad. You get hospitalized for dehydration caused by alcohol. No, that was caused by cocaine. James O'Sullivan. Can I send Facebook stars? Do they help you? Yes. Mm-hmm. Bo Bennington, my man. Thanks for the fiber. Excellent reporting on exposing Silent Mike as a bitter liar. He's truly jealous of your success and can't handle it any longer. He's losing his mind. I know. But imagine how lame that is to call yourself a fucking a writer on The Tonight Show. And you were never a writer on The Tonight Show. You were a faxer. That doesn't make you a writer. And then he claims he, that he was like a go-to guy on Stern. Really? Two episodes? Give me a fucking break. <laughs> Ryan A. Why did you blame Jackie for smoking at the hotel? Well, we both did. Penis wrinkle 12. Thanks for the two bucks. If you never took a test, how do you know it was COVID? Because I know I'm that smart. I could run things. Naga! Naga! Crack a beer for the electrolyte skull. Uh, maybe later. Right now, just chilling. Brock Lee, my man. Took me three weeks to get over the COVID. Dawn gave me an AC. Feel better. Well, that's weird, Brock. It only took me one day. Are you vaccinated, Brock? Text me. Because it only took me one day. Just like this only took me one day. I had a bad fever yesterday. Then 11 30 at night, it broke. I didn't take any medication either. Maybe my immune system is just that good. James O'Sullivan. 
Thanks for the two bucks. For your information, I think Michael is lying about dating your mom. I know. A another lame lie. The Secret Squirrel. Thanks for the two bucks. Is that a cartoon? I think it is, right? Secret Squirrel. Thanks for the two bucks. The shit way it has spies watching you and your family. Probably. Brock Lee, my man. Uh, thanks for the fiver. Vince asked to join us at the Belmont Tavern dinner. Brock, that's not happening. That is not. I talked to David Dorfman today. He's invited. You're invited, Brock. Leo Gunn's invited. And Dirty Deeds is invited. And me. And the tab. Um, it's all on me. I'm paying the tab. As a thank you for all your generous super chats and your friendship. But that's, I am paying. So order whatever you want. I don't care if it's top shelf league. Ziggy Kruger. Thanks for the two bucks. Shouldn't allow your guests to snort against terms of service. He was snorting a nose spray for his allergies. He laughs at all you idiots, and I am too. Danny Thomas loved hooker shitting in his mouth. Thanks for the fiber. Have you seen my daughter Marlo Thomas? I always thought she was so hot. I tried to set up with my nephew Brian Karam, but she wasn't interested. Uh, Brian Karam's cocaine addiction. You know, see, you guys are so. You know what? This just makes me laugh how you could believe something without any verifiable proof, but you'll just believe it. It's like that's Dabble's Anonymous. They believe everything stupid just because they think they want it to be true. It's like an eight-year-old believing in Santa Claus. You guys are fucking losers, man. Bochetti Tooth Chad. <laughs> I like that name. Your hierarchy is only a matter to you. Writer equals writer. No, it doesn't. You wouldn't have any faxer say that they were a writer. Okay, thank you, David Dorfman. Uh, thank you, Chris. Yeah. Thank you, John. Uh... I will say we get some great news for the Melendez family, but I'm not going to share any of that with you. But Mud Brooks, thanks for the two bucks. You dislike Vince Lawyer, but praise Muttering Jay, hypocrite. How's that a hypocrite? Muttering Jay, as far as I think, is not Vince, although Lady K says he has proof of it. So then maybe I should just sue Vince. If I find a lawyer in New York, the well, my lawyer hasn't got back to me. I think he changed his number. He moved to North Carolina. Thanks for the two bucks. Get four and one vax. Flu, C19, Plaplamum, Paplamavirus, and SARS. Thank you, FK Miami. I'm glad you're back, you beautiful little lady. Baby Satchmo. Silent Mike. More like screaming Osa when Mike is digging out her mud cannon. Happy St. Patrick's Day, fat, fat neck. I have a very slender neck. God, you guys are very, very mean to me. James O'Sullivan, the Jurassic Park ride is a lot of fun. Vince, seriously, I am Vince Aloya, just a fan of you both. Cotto style. Thanks for the fiver. You put people down from the spelling words and you butchered anomaly today on Twitter. What happened? You know, I knew it, too. I knew I spelled it wrong. And before I could correct it, I, I hit send. And I said, I don't care. Funeral director. Send Vince the link. Hundred bucks. Richard's hot dog. To Casey, it'll cost a thousand. Thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. Um, KMAC, three, three, four, four. Thanks for the two bucks. A parody song in contact contest with Morris. <laughs> Why, why do I want to give them any attention? I'm the goat. I'm the dude. I'm the Duke of the Dabbleverse. They are nobody. James O'Sullivan. Thanks for the two bucks. Big fan of Mike V's Cosby work. Made me laugh a lot. Daniel August, my man. Oh, by the way, I want to thank Spectre. Last, yesterday when I was out of my mind with COVID, I, I, I thanked Daniel and I thanked Leo. 
I forget, man. I was so fucked up. And I didn't thank Spectre. So Spectre, if you're listening, sorry. I thanked you when you did it. But then I just was like so out of it. I forgot and I felt bad about it as soon as I fucking put my head down on a pillow. So uh, I apologize again, Spectre, and thank you. You've been always so kind and generous, and I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for the tenor. <laughs> I stuck up for you today and got into a bad argument. Producer Joe overheard him and discount Don saying you eat shit sandwiches. And I say what they were lying because you don't eat bread. I got you. That's right. I'm not a big bread guy. Like I said, I had bacon and eggs today. No bread. And I'm losing weight. And I'm working out, pumping the guns. I know they don't look big now. But they will next week. Mark my words. The muscle memory on these guns are insane. DK, thanks for the two bucks. You take COVID tests still. Ha, ha, ha. Why is it wrong to take a COVID test? If, like, I'm going to take a COVID test before I go out in public. If it still says I'm positive, then I got to stay home. Which sucks. I don't want to. James O'Sullivan, thanks for the two bucks. How do I know if I'm Vince or not? Go to CBS. Frank Futa. Thanks for the fiber. John, huge fan. You're a stellar actor. People truly believe that you're a really broke alcohol, unfunny, dumb hack. They don't know that this is an act. <laughs> Look, I know you love to hate me, but I know at the end of the day, you love me. I know you do. You're entertained by me at the very least. Bochetti Tooth Chad, thanks for the two bucks. Concane addiction, less embarrassing than alcoholism. It wasn't an addiction. I was just on a, I just did Coke for two days straight and, um, Got really dehydrated. FKA Mammy, no invite. Are you in Jersey? If you're in Jersey, you're invited. Okay? I'd love to have you. I don't know how big those tables are, though. They're pretty small. Penis wrinkle. Thanks, 12. Thanks for the two bucks. You're in denial using COVID to cover up large issues. Yeah, okay. Like what? Goes to Ralph Melendez. Thanks for the two bucks. Your apartment and kids are your karma. Skull. Ugh. I got, uh, I'm not going to say anything. Old Craig, thanks for the two bucks. Careful of the wind today. It'll make you puke. Mike V. So nice to you to pay for Vince Lawyer's lunch at the Belmont. Uh, he will not be invited and he will not even know the date. Broccoli workout. He got a good body. He's sexy. James O'Sullivan. Can I apply to be a faxer for a stuttering John show? <laughs> yeah, we don't use fax machines anymore. Carl's Frosted Tips. Oh, I'm going to get into him, too. Stop already. You're not going to sue anyone, liar. We'll see about that. Bochetti, Tooth Chad. Thanks for the two bucks. We believe it all. Wait, is that Rocco's arrest pick? Is it? Funeral director. Thanks for the fiber. Do you believe the two will leave show after information against them came out? Example, Rich B and Trumper and Bushy, Brian's drug use, Casey and Vin for president. Uh, neither one are true. Rich is not a Trumper and Brian's not a uh, a drug use guy. But Mud Brooks, thanks for the two bucks. So now you don't think Vince the lawyer is Mud energy. I don't know. I'm on the fence. Ryan A, thanks for the two bucks. Are you going to put sunscreen on your head? Spot this summer. What? That right there? That's called a part. Ron Joseph. Hey, for a 58-year-old man, I got a full fucking head of hair. Give me a fucking break. Ron Joseph. Thanks for the two bucks. Shit way is what? 10 years younger? He's bald. I mean, look at his fuck. Are you kidding me? You fucking kidding me? Are you fucking with me? Vince is 10 years fucking younger than me. He's bald. He's got the Burt haircut. John, have you considered the 12-step program? I hate walking upstairs. Ziggy Kruger. Thanks for the fiber. Don't stress. Shuli said he won't talk about kids. And Suzanne, any of you, 
Just as soon to get her side of the story. It'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What side? I never said my side. There's no side. Just, just the passion was gone. There's no sides. I'll always love the mother of my children. How do sweet air? Can you show want to try with my uncle? You got to go to a dentist. And then you pay for it. Okay, now let's see what we got here. Who shall we go after next? Hmm. Already they have me. They already have me like all over the place on here. Okay, here we go. All righty. Uh, so fucking lame. That major. All right, first of all. KC is the worst interviewer known to man. I don't know what happened to his set now. So he must be back at his mom's house. He must have lost his studio. So now he's he's probably at his mom's house. He's got a green sheet in the background, which makes no sense if he's not going to do green screen. There's Moonhead Paulino. So let's look at this great fucking interview, shall we? This should be fun. A walk down Moonhead Lane. Fucking Casey. What if, I mean, two losers. Two real, real losers. No kids. No family. No job. No life. But they have microphones. What, what was it that made you want to did you know he was a scumbag before now KC now calls me a scumbag but it was only three months ago he was begging me to do his show ain't that weird huh how things work why did you a hey, case why'd you ask me to do your show why'd you ask me to do your show ad nauseum now I'm a scumbag huh because why because I'm fucking successful and you're a loser Living with your mom? You had anything to do with him? Or, or did you think that was just the act that he was putting up? Are we talking about John? Yeah. I mean, to, 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 to give him a date. Um, have you seen, did you see his comedy beforehand? Or yeah. what, what was the draw that made you, because this is a great place. I mean, this is, uh, you know. Uh, okay. Now, this is, uh, first of all, Moonhead is going to give this little smirk. Did, did you see his comedy? No, you haven't, Vinny. You never seen me live. You saw some fucking edited tape from a bar from a barbecue place from the side where the guy had an agenda to make me look bad. That's not my stand-up. He edited out the tags or took out the punchline and left the tags. Vince. You're a moonhead. You're a loser. Know it. And by doing this, now you let the fire under my ass, and I'm going to get coming after you every fucking day, you fucking moonhead. Fucking loser. Piece of shit. But let's watch KC. This is, this is, this is, the idiocy of K.C. Armstrong. Remember when he didn't know what the Statue of Liberty was? Um, have you seen, did you see his comedy beforehand? Or yeah. what What was the draw that made you, because this is a great place. I mean, this is, uh, you know, uh, if, if you're playing at the, Carl, at the Carlton. It, okay. Case. Hey, Case, you dumb fuck. Do some fucking research. It's comedy at the Carl's son. 
I mean, if you're going to put me down, at least know what the comedy club is. If you got the guy on that works at the comedy club, at least give him the respect to know the name of the club. Is that, did I say it right? This car, it's the car. No, it's it's too close. Carlson. How do you say it? The Carlson, sorry. Yeah. But yeah. Nice, nice case. Nice. Now you have a dust mop instead of that stupid doll. Where's your keyboard? Did I guilt you away from that? Because that was pretty stupid too. But then again, stupid is as stupid does. But no, it's in cool. Rochester, that's that's the gig. That's the gig. Case, you're in Rochester. So if you're if you're on stage there, you know, you you um you are somebody. So well <laughs> So if you're on stage at com at comedy on the Carlton, as KC says, then you're somebody. Okay, Case. So if you get on a stage at a shitty comedy club in the armpit of New York, known as Rochester, you have made it? Are you out of your fucking mind? Shitway was on that stage. Fucking Cardiff's on that stage. And he don't even show his face. He's so embarrassed. That somehow means you made it? Are you fucking with me? What made you want to put him uh, up there? Was it uh, kind of like the, uh, the freak show or... Oh, my God. This guy can't even formulate a question. Tell me you're thinking, please. Uh, well, okay. Uh, if I Casey, how much drugs are you on right now? Seriously. Tell me. You seem like you're really, really drugged out here, Case. I had to break it down. My whole relationship with John started because I wanted to give him shit to fuck with Carl about for the creep off. <laughs> nice. Fake laugh number one. <laughs> nice. Fake laugh number one. Don't worry, we got at least two more. For example, <laughs> the cow bikini picture and all that stuff. <laughs> so I had to, you know, make nice with the guy. And Carter found the opening and got me in there. And he just you know, was very nice. John was perfectly pleasant and nice to me, and I was... Of course. Of course. Because I'm a nice guy, Moonhead, you fat fuck. Perfectly pleasant and nice to him. I perfect KC knows it, too. But KC wants to now take the angle that everybody else is. That angle's getting tired. Wouldn't it be refreshing? You know, if these guys wanted to do something different, they would come... You know, I hung out with John. He was a great guy. Then you're doing something different. But you guys don't want to be different. You all want to do the same thing. Every single fucking one of you. But then when I go to Atlantic City, what do you do? Hey, John, can I have a picture? Hey, John, you want to hang out? Because I'm the dude. I'm the man. Because you could do because you everybody. could do something for him, then. Oh, really? Really? Like I really want to go to Rochester, KC, to work for a few shekels and be in that shithole. The crime infested, poverty stricken Rochester. That's what I want to do. The fuck out of here. Well, I know that, and I, I always knew that, but how do I put him? I perfectly because you, could do, so, you, could, you could do something for him, then. Well, I know that, and I, I always knew that, but what are you gonna, Vince Moonhead, Moonhead? What the fuck are you gonna do for me? Get me a gig? 
If I wanted a gig, hello, Harry. Um, you know, I'm free. Uh, you have any, uh, you have that? Are you my hand lighting things open for Tahoe? I, I mean, um, for Reno or uh, for Vegas, improv. I mean, are you kidding me? I just call the club. And I don't want to go to Rochester. I'll go to Florida. I'll go to New York. I'll go to fucking New Jersey. Hey, Vinny. Stress Factory, Vinny. I don't want to go to Rochester. Who the fuck does? I'll go to Helium in Philly. I don't want to go to Rochester. You fucking with me? You dumb fucks? But how do I put this? After a while, like, it started getting kind of sad. Where oh, here, here comes KC fake laugh number two. Where it was like, you know, a lot of, you know, I, these people fuck with me. They fuck with my life. You know, I lost my job because of this. And that's real life consequences over stuff that there shouldn't be real life consequences over. One would generally think, okay, yeah. one would generally think, you don't want someone to lose their job. Well, yeah, yeah, but but of course, everyone knows that uh, it wasn't anyone that did that. He did it to himself. Everybody knows. Okay. All right. All right. Now, look, this is the best to me. So, Casey, everybody knows that I did it to myself. So when they called the first time to the school district, claimed I had an anti-Semitic show, which was when I was doing my political show, where the whole mantra of the show was fighting against hate and bigotry of any kind and yeah okay case so that's yeah i had to show them clips of the show to prove my innocence but that's my doing right case that's not all these fucking haters doing so when they cancel my comedy gigs threatening violence on women that's my doing ain't it case ain't it you fucking idiot Oh, yeah, yeah. So they canceled my comedy shows, so that's my fault. They threatened bad Yelp and Google reviews, but that's my fault. Right, Case? You stupid fuck. And Vinny, look at you. You should have stayed quiet, because now every day I have the Moonhead Minute, and the Moonhead Minute of Misery is going to be all about the life and times. The lives and times of Vinny Moonhead Paulino. And believe me, it's going to be a deep dive into your life, Vince. You should have kept your mouth shut, Vince. knows that of course he did it to himself i'm just oh, really everybody knows that really i did it to myself how i thought i was still teaching at fairfax the fuck out of here and the guy's got nothing yeah. and i got nothing i got three wonderful kids i got a beautiful house and plus i got nothing what do you got moonhead what do you got a shithole house in Rochester, the armpit of New York, crime infested, poverty stricken. And you got something, you fat fuck. And what I mean, if you break your toys, what's the fucking fun of having them? <laughs> Casey's laughing, fake laugh, doesn't even understand the joke, nor do I, if it's a joke. <laughs> it's, oh, oh look he look he is really giggling at this one this is over the top fake laughing from the casey armstrong <laughs> that's a good way to it's a good way to put it now also i also believe you got to pay to play sometimes right you got to uh -huh. pay to play so you know he eventually asked me i never invited him i never said pitched him hey come to the club he said to me 
hey, Vin, uh, you know, that club up there. How you guys? Yeah, maybe we could do something sometime. I like to come up there and check out. Maybe we could do something sometime. And he would say things like that. And eventually I was just like, let me. There's, there's Fake Lab when I'm number four now. Case? Oh, I love this one. This is a great Fake Lab. This is hysterical. Jesus, Vince is the next coming of Howard Stern. Wow, Case. Is this the funniest comic you've ever seen? <clears throat> Come to the club, he said to me, Hey, Vin, uh, you know, that club up there, how you guys, yeah, maybe we could do something sometime. I like to come up there and check out, maybe we could do something sometime. And he would say things like that. And eventually, I was just like, Let me think about it. And... <laughs> oh, now he's got look, look at the, Oh, this is the best one. <laughs> Who are you, the wicked witch of the West case? Yeah, maybe we could do something sometime. I like to come up there and check out, maybe we could do something sometime. And he would say things like that. And eventually, I was just like, let me think about it. <laughs> oh, come here, my pretty. And Toto, too. <laughs> oh, God, Casey, you're an embarrassment. You drug addict, alcoholic, fired from the Stern Show. You lost everything. You cheated on Amory. You fucked that up, too. You got fucking herpes, and look where you are now. Living with your mommy. Time. I like to come up there and check out. Maybe we could do something sometime. And he would say things like that. And eventually I was just like, let me think about it. And... <laughs> that's how that's how he, he wants to broker a deal with you. Hey, maybe we could do something. Like he's, yeah, he's so important. Yeah, and it was like, come on, maybe we could do something. And you know, my mother, they call Oh, so now this is Vince doing the impression that everybody does of me. which doesn't sound a bit like me, but Vince is doing the impression that has gone around for so long. Not one, the only guy who does a decent one is Baloney Factory. All around Christmas. And I, I legitimately am not a terrible guy where I want to fuck. And Carl and him, at the time of a lot of this, they were all still talking. Like okay. that shit hadn't all completely blown up and gone sideways yet. <laughs> and <laughs> Never talking with Carl. The only time I saw him on call was when I came back for a very brief moment and we were discussing doing like two shows. One on his network, one on mine. But KC is laughing so hard. Wow, look at this. This has got to be the fun. By the way, 38 people watching. Where I want to fuck. And Carl and him, at the time of a lot of this, they were all still talking. Like okay. that shit hadn't all completely blown up and gone sideways yet. <laughs> and <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Casey. Let's get the greatest hits. Casey laughs again. La fake laugh number five. That's his new fragrance. The new Casey. Fake laugh number five. Completely blown up and gone sideways. This is depression. Fake laugh number five. Is yet. <laughs> and <laughs> I. <laughs> 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 you are such a loser case holy shit i i said this on watp casey <laughs> and i stand by it oh god they case are you sitting on a feather what are you on laughing gas he's not saying anything funny case holy shit and you're the one trying to get my ex-wife on Holy crap. Like okay. that shit hadn't all completely blown up and gone sideways yet. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I I said this on WATP, Casey, and I stand <laughs> by it. The quote from Jurassic Park. I thought so long and hard about whether or not I could, I didn't stop to think if I should. <laughs> Does that make Oh, God. It doesn't make any sense to Casey. It doesn't. And Vinny, how many times are you how many times are you gonna use that same line, Vince? It's getting fucking old. Find the new fucking line. Vinny, you're a loser. Nobody knows who you are. You live in the armpit of New York known as Rochester. You've accomplished zero in life. Zero. And you're on a show that has 38 
viewers. 38. And you're laughing at me? Oh, my God. Makes sense. <laughs> uh, like, I thought... Oh, God. Oh, this is a knee slapper. Whoa, Nelly. Whoa, Nelly. Stop it. My sides are splitting. Stop it. This is killing me. But I didn't stop to think if I should. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> like, I thought to myself, how crazy would it be to put John up, like we did DabbleCon. How crazy would it be to actually get the guy in the building for something and give, let people watch the show in person and see what John does? I mean, we sit there and watch him on his couch. We're all fascinated by what he does. Why not put him up there? And I said, Cardiff Electric and I will be glad to help. There it is. Everyone's fascinated. Everybody wants to see what John does next. Hmm. Heard that before. Oh, yeah, private parts about Howard. Help you. But I also explained to him, and I don't want to get too deep into this because I promised I'd save it for Carl. I talked about how the I, reality. I, I saved it for my girlfriend, Lit Carla. Carla gets first dibs on this groundbreaking story about stuttering John as if there hasn't been 18 million fucking shows doing stories on Stuttering John. Holy fucking shit. What he is of what he does, the name, it's the name. It's not a stand-up. Like, you're more of a Branson-style act. People go, oh, I remember them. Maybe I'll go see what they're up to now. Instead of Brand you mean handsome? Of hey, this guy's a great comedian. I want to go check out his comedy. Gotcha. Like a screech type thing. Oh God, Case. Case, who are you then? Maybe I'll go see what they're up to now. Instead of hey, this guy's a great comedian. I want to go check out his comedy. Gotcha. Like a screech type thing. It, like a Dustin Diamond type thing. All right, yeah. Pete Dustin. Uh, oh, yeah. So there you go. So Vinny now is comparing me to Screech. Oh, Moonhead, please. Don't worry, Vinny. Don't worry. Don't worry. The Moonhead Minute of Misery, and it's coming. Oh, he's dead? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's all dead. He's all dead. Oh, dear. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, you know. So I, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Please. No, finish your thought. Well, I was just saying that, like, we gave him the opportunity to do it. We said we'd help him do it. I, I said we could find cool clips. <laughs> <'cause we're laughs> <up. laughs> we, yeah. Oh, my God. What is Casey taking? Guys, am I? Is, is he fucking using again? Finish your thought. Well, I was just saying that, like, we gave him the opportunity to do it. We said we'd help him do it. I, I said we could find cool clips. <laughs> I'm laughing we, already. <laughs> yeah. I said we could we could set you up to do an evening with Stuttering John. What is he laughing it, about? It, you know, so I, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Please. No, finish your thought. Well, I was just saying that, like, we gave him the opportunity to do it. We said we'd help him do it. I, I said we could find cool clips. <laughs> <'cause we're laughs> I'm laughing we, already. <laughs> yeah, I said we could we could set you up to do an evening with Stuttering John. We didn't even book it as stand up comedy. We mm -hmm. event, we booked it as storytelling and like whatever because I don't want to like confuse people. You know what I mean? And I said mm -hmm. I'll be glad to turn on the club's cameras for you. I'll give you the footage. You could do with it what you want. If you if you put the time and effort into this, John, and you work really really hard and you put together something good. You have something on your resume that you haven't had no resume. Oh my God. How fucking delusional are these people? I my resume is movies, TV shows, writing credits. You think doing anything in Rochester is worthy of a resume, you fat fuck? A long time. You were in a real club and you have video proof of it. I mean, that's something. 
So like I tried to set the guy up so he could have something. And something. it's just spectacularly yeah, yeah, because I don't have enough, Vinny. What do you got? What does KC have? I have Stern, the Tonight Show, fucking Osmosis Jones, fucking me while he's by. I got fucking I got tripping a rift. What do you have? What do you guys have? Between the two of you, nothing. Blew up because he's a dick. <laughs> yeah, because I'm a dick. You fucking renege on the, you breach the contract, but I'm a dick. Okay, Moonhead. <laughs> so, Vin, was there a, can you pinpoint the exact time um, uh, was it a phone call at like uh, two in the morning when something can you pinpoint <laughs> when it went south? <laughs> I can, but I can't tell you. I'm sorry. Okay, all right, no I problem. Tell you, and I promised that I would tell this story on WATP Live. Oh god. Oh my god. Oh on WATP Live. Who gives a fuck? Here, let me see what lie. Let me see what you're going to say, Vince. Let's see. It's going to be something like, oh, we had a conference call and I didn't make it. Yeah, I didn't make it because I wasn't going to talk to a fucking potato. I asked him to be his real face and he didn't want to do that. And I'm not having a business meeting with a fucking vegetable. I have business meetings with Debbie Vickers, executive producer for tonight's show. I'll have a business meeting with Jay Leno. I'll have a business meeting with Howard Stern. I'm not having a business meeting with a fucking vegetable. In Largo, Florida next week, WATP Live. I no promise, problem. Carl, I do have a couple of stories about phone calls with him that are... <laughs> <laughs> someone fucking someone cut to Max Katie and fucking Cape Fear. And here's the thing, John. I want John if he sees this and he's like, oh, you better not moonhead. Oh, oh. Whatever the fuck. John, I'm not going to tell anything that you told me in confidence. I have no interest in talking about your children. I have no interest in talking about anything else. I just want to talk about you and the way you handled your shit with me. That's that's fair enough, and it says a lot about your integrity. Where, oh you, yeah, oh, again, yeah, case everybody, everyone seems to have integrity, except me, right, case. It's a lot about your integrity, where you again, say, you know, people who say they're going to do something and uh, and do it, you know, that, that that's a big thing in uh, in what we do. Whether it be, uh, you know, what do you do, Case? Case, what do you do? Seriously, tell me. I'm curious. In what we do, what do you do? Please tell me. What do you do, Case? What have you done with your career? You have a fake radio station. You have books that you didn't write, and you claim they were bestsellers. They weren't, and. Uh, it's just amazing to me. I don't care about that. Let's go on to here. Where is the red bar thing? Let me find that one. That's great, too. Okay, hold on. And now let me do something else here. Uh, I just saw uh, Blind Mike said I lied about last comic standing. I did not. I met with the people. They were asking me to be a judge on last comic standing. But, of course, they're going to say it's a lie. They have no idea what's true. But but they always every, – everybody seems to always ha have an idea of what is true or what is not with me. I know what the truth is. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not the shit way or Silent Mike. Let me get a water. I just put it in members only. I don't give a fuck.
Mm. All righty. Mm. Uh. Uh. All right. Oh, they're all upset. I put it in members only. Gives up fuck. Go get some super chats here. Break up the news. Coming up next, watch me take down me and Mike David from Red Bar. Take down Lady Kmart. All right. Just looking for the beginning of this. I let it go for a little while here. Uh... Okay. Uh, let's see. K Mac thirty three forty four. Thanks for the two bucks. One of the guys you invited to Belmont is really Vince the lawyer. Uh, let's see. It's not David Dorfman. It's not Leo Gunn. It's not Brock Lee. Uh, and uh, it's not Dirty Deeds. All I have talked to on the phone. So I don't believe that's true. Ozone. Thanks for the fiber. True story. If Vinny sees you on the street, he needs to walk the other way. Look, first of all, no one gives a shit about Tampa. No one's going. And if they were going, it's probably a papered room. So it doesn't matter. James O'Sullivan, thanks for the two bucks. Food good at barbecue restaurant? What best on men menu? I don't even know if I ate. I don't think I did. If you know director, thanks for the fiver. Please be respectful to KC. He's a good dude. No, he's not. One of the best staff members from Stern. No, he wasn't. He is brilliant. He has issues, but fixes them. Casey for president. You don't know the you don't know the real man. He's an asshole. Boschetti, Tooth Chad. Thanks for ducks. Proof us wrong. I think it mean prove. And record a final stuttering John stand up special. Frank Footer. Thanks for the fiber. I love this stuttering John character play. The Hitler suit is off putting. I don't do a Hitler salute. Can I get two comp tickets for my husband and I to your live stand-up whenever I'm going to come back? It, it'll be sooner than later, though. Ryan A., thanks for the ducks. What would Mickey from Rocky say if he were here? You can do it, Rock. You can do it. Old Craig, thanks for the five bucks. When you leave your apartment, are you moving to my house in Florida? How is your fake lawsuit going, and why do you – Run from Shirley in the pockets. I don't. I've given him three shots to be funny. He hasn't. That's too, too many. Frank Footer, thanks for the two bucks. Brush teeth, very yellow. Gum disease is real. Um, Vegas beer sales. Jerry, Casey's a scamming blockhead. Ripped off the fans. Of course he is. He's a fucking dickhead. Now he's like... Keeps trying to get my ex-wife on, sending her his books and shit. It's like, shut up, you idiot. Penis wrinkle, 12. Thanks for the two bucks. You called Carl scared when Chad threatened you. No, I didn't. Mike V, why are you telling and Vince Alaya while showing KC? It, oh, it's Moonhead. John's ready with can. Thanks for the two bucks. Yeah, Canoga is a paradise compared to Rochester. Yeah, I didn't buy a house in Canoga. And there are nice areas of Canoga Park. JVA, two, uh, thanks for the talks. 
Hey, John, you not Mensa, you menstrual. <laughs> John's ready with can. I have better shot to headline a club than you, fool. Yeah, well, then why did I headline so many of them? Tim Bullinger, thanks for the two bucks. You would have 30 views if called in fine. Yeah, okay. Funeral director, thanks for the two bucks. All oh, criticism, self criticism, UKC, two smart men, drug. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Frank Futa. You should rename your show Alky Scrolls Reddit. John's Ready Whip Can. Yelling, arguing with people not there is totally normal. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Reverend should say, powerful pooper. You leak someone's number, but I'm telling who. Okay. My Dixie Normus. My Dick. My dick's enormous. Doesn't really make sense. My dick's enormous. Yeah, maybe put an S after the X. My dick's enormous. Anyway, thanks for five bucks. Hey, John, I'm a huge fan of the Shuley Network. You're a loser. Watch the Uncle Rico show on the Shuley Network. Yeah, that, that show's dying. The numbers don't lie. He's dying. John's ready with can. Can't say when others get laughs, like Artie said. Diz five. Thanks for the two bucks. Wow, when 98 Stern said you're a burn, a bum, long live Shuli. Who the fuck would like Shuli? You gotta be really out of your mind. Funeral director, how exactly is KC an asshole? James O'Sullivan walked away. Did I miss Jurassic Park ride convo? Pochetti Tooth Chad, thanks for the two bucks. Why are you not recording a stand up special? I don't know. Canoga Park, COVID is running rampant. Okay, let me find this now. Mm-hmm. Do 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 do. Do 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 Hmm. All righty. This I love. Now, I have to say, I'm a fan of Mike, Dev, David, and Jules from Red Bar. I am. I'm a legitimate fan. So, you know, he does call me a loser here, but it's okay. It's okay. You know, I, I'm not going to get, I, I I like the guy. I think he does a good job. And his girl there, Jules, I don't I don't know what she looks like, but she has a very um, cute laugh. I like her laugh. That's not too sexist or misogynistic. But he does not, I didn't know this about Chrissy Mayer, and I'm not here to throw stones here, but I would never steal a purse. But here, her lips, and then we'll talk about Lady K. Big gums, Christmas present stealing, Chrissy Mar. The amount of goods that she stole actually makes it grand theft. She stole over $700 worth of stuff, which is grand larceny. She admitted this. There was a bag on one of the tables, shopping bag. I'm looking at it. I'm watching a lot of people leave. I'm kind of lingering around. Everybody's hanging around. I'm standing around. Do you want to steal this bag? You're eyeing someone's bag and you're wanting to steal it? It's a 40-year-old woman. Could you imagine? I don't even notice another table at a restaurant. I would never, ever steal or want to steal anything from anybody. Unless I'm making fun of them for being cringe. I'm not looking at their bags going, there's some nice stuff. I was like, I'm just going to take it. I took it and I walked out with it. What the fuck? That is lame. You stole someone's floor. bag. At your business company holiday party. And now you're telling everybody without a hint of shame. We kind of like sneak off to the subway and we were trying to like keep our distance from like anybody else. And like nobody was coming after us. What um, was in the bag? Peter Millar, which is a really nice, really nice clothes. I <laughs> love it. I it, love stolen clothes. It, she admitted this 100%. This wasn't up for debate. Now she's telling people that it's just made up. She's telling people that it's a lie. It is that on we're YouTube, coming dummy. up with. What the fuck's up with the sweaters, Chrissy? Okay, okay. Where are the sweaters, Chrissy? 
this is a story that has been twisted, uh, and now I guess it's internet lore. There's so many different versions of this going around. Uh, when I first started at Compound Media, we had a Christmas party. I think it was in January. Fire. I'm not going to call a wife for that because you can get dates wrong. As I piece together these details and ask uh, everyone. You said make it stolen. Don't fucking backtrack now. The Christmas party was like in late late January. Chrissy is a thief who stole Christmas presents from an old woman. Is that, oh, is that, is that not real? No, it's not real. You know, when people do this, this is where they become lifelong enemies of mine. When you flat out tell a lie, this is what got Gavin McKinnon. People go, why are you obsessed with Gavin? Because he hates you? No, because he flat out tells a dastardly lie. And when you lie like that to the public, you go, what else are they lying about? This is monstrous. They're telling lies that you and I wouldn't in a million years dare to tell. Anthony Cumia, same thing. When he told people that they fired me after I quit like a child and kept that up, you've gone beyond a guy that I don't like. That's like a criminal lie. You're fucking sick. Dude. Chrissy Marr was live now with a whopping 32 viewers. Who are these people? podcast like he did a review on red bar a while back this is a video cast first and foremost. oh this okay. i love and he even explained you have to watch the show you can't just listen to it. the audio version is no good it's 10 times better he says if you watch the video let me tell you what the video is it's watching a guy okay, do this hold on we have to watch okay this on. is a video cast okay now you want to talk hypocrites here the, now i wish brennan uh, brennan if you're watching you should play this because this is amazing. This is Lady K, you know, the mandolin man, the uh, <laughs> the Napster, if you will. This is Lady K saying, who wants to watch two fat guys on video? This is Lady K. Hypocrite. This is truly Lady K now is going to fucking talk about how it's stupid to put people on camera. Why do they podcast WDTP? Now watch. This is unbelievable. Take this in for yourselves. Who are these podcasts? He did a review on Red Bar a while back. This is a video cast, first and foremost. Okay. And he even explained. Oh, back. This is a video cast, oh, yeah. first and foremost. I want to get this Live now with a whopping 32 viewers. Who are these podcasts? He did a review on Red Bar a while back. Oh, this is a video cast, first and foremost. Okay. And he. This is a. You on Red Bar a while back. Oh, this is a video cast, first and foremost. Okay. And he even explained. You have to watch the show. You can't just listen to it. The audio version is no good. It's 10 times better, he says, if you watch the video. Let me tell you what the video is. It's watching a guy do a podcast. There's nothing that he does that's special. There's a TV behind him, but it's just a guy doing a podcast. You can't see Jewel. She's not even on the show. It's just a guy fucking talking. A lot of podcasters who have made the terrible decision to add video to their shows. Yes. Annoying. People have, have told us we should do a video cast. Could you imagine people watching us do this no, right now? This no. would be fucking terrible. You're standing next to a mini fridge. Right. Like an asshole. Right. No, not even a little bit. It's it's not entertaining in any single way. Two fat guys sitting around right. drinking a beer and talking to a microphone. Okay. Now, I love this. This, to me, is fucking gold. And the thing that I love about this the most is Lady K is so adamant and is so positive in what he's saying. Who wants to watch two people do a podcast? That, why in any way? I got to do this. Boy. This guy is so annoying. Yeah, that's all he does is everything's on video. So he's goofing on Mike David for doing a video cast. And yet, that's what he does now. Two fat fucks, him and Moonhead. I mean, this guy always thinks he's right about everything. But yet he's wrong about everything. I love this. And thank you, Mike David. Because this is awesome. Whoever put this together, this just further proves 
What a fucking loser. Lady K. Sheberger is. He is such a fucking hypocritical loser. When I happened to tune in, this was a premiere where they had premiered it live, but it was pre-taped. Chrissy was in. Let me tell you what the video is. It's watching a guy do a podcast. There is nothing that he does that's special. There's a TV behind him, but it's just a guy doing a podcast. You can't see Jewel. She's not even on the show. It's just a guy fucking yeah. talking. A lot of podcasters who have made the terrible decision to add video to their shows. Yes. Oh, people have, have told us we should do a video cast. Could you imagine people watching us do this no, right now? This no. would be fucking terrible. You're standing next to a mini fridge. Right. Like an asshole. Right. No, not even a oh, little bit. It's it's not entertaining in any single way. Two fat nah. guys sitting around drinking I beer. I didn't see it. It's... It's not entertaining in any single way, say. It's like a combination of Pat Dixon and uh, G. Edward Robinson. What was it? And Lady K. It's not a thing in any single way. It's not entertaining in any single way, John. It's not entertaining in any single way. Nobody wants to watch this in any single way. Is that not right, John? John, is it not entertaining in any single way? Who wants to watch Two Fat Fox in any single way? In the meantime, the isotopes are going to steal the the nerd's version and the Devo. They're going to put the slide rules in their pocket. That's not a ripoff in any single way. Right, Lady K? It's not a ripoff in any single way. Is it, Lady K? You just like to rob everything from everybody, don't you? But it's not a ripoff in any single way. Right, Lady K. Oh! Holy shit. Oh, I got to hear this one more time. But it's just a guy doing a podcast. You can't see Jewel. She's not even on the show. It's just a guy fucking talking. Yeah. A lot of podcasters who have made the terrible decision to add video to their shows. Yes. People have, have told us we should do a video cast. Could you imagine people watching us do this no. right now? This no. would be fucking terrible. You're standing next to a mini fridge right. like an asshole. Right. No, not even a little bit. It's, it's not entertaining in any single way. Two fat guys sitting around drinking a beer and talking to a microphone. There you go. Hypocrite. When I happened to tune in, this was a premiere where they had premiered it live, but it was pre-taped. Chrissy was in the chat. Her husband, her weird, freaky, dicky little living boy yes. toy, Frank Pellegrino, was in the chat. Wait till you see this crappy show. I couldn't believe my eyes. Whatever the opposite of imposter syndrome is, Stuttering John. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if it has a name. Okay. Imposter syndrome. Is it's a Zoom show. They're both on Skype. Okay. This is just FaceTime between friends. Hence, not a fucking show. Show. Chrissy is sitting in her bedroom. She does one of these podcasts every single day. The convo these two fucking dummies were having when I tuned in to their pathetic 32 live show. Here's this fucking nerd who had the nerve to front us. He did a podcast making fun of Red Bar. Yeah. We're trying to get my Patreon taken down, which is my main source of income, which is an act of fucking violence. Oh, there. Just watch this shit. Uh, I might not. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> Yeah, he does like his drops, so that's <laughs> funny. Where are you podcasting from, Chrissy? Where are um, you? My apartment. Um, this is Look a pink apartment. light bulb. Yeah. I'm gonna... Now, first of all, I mean, Lady K, you are so pathetic. So pathetic. And you think you're, and I love that, Mike, you are a nerd. You're a hack. You have no talent. The corner. This is supposed to be my inspiration corner. It's like chalkboard painted paint. And then that's also she's literally sitting in the cheapest corner of the cheapest apartment in the cheapest neighborhood of New York City with the cheapest lamp with the cheapest 
party bulb. You ever been to Walgreens and you go down the home utility aisle where they sell extension cords? If you scan your eyes way to the bottom, Walgreens for years has kept a blue bulb and a red bulb. They're about 265. They're called party bulbs. And you buy them and you screw them in. It's a 40 watt colored bulb. That's what she's put in a lamp. These two idiots are going to discuss it as if this is a Steven Spielberg decorated film set. <laughs> Listen to this fucking lunacy. The lighting is very, I guess, kind of like a, a red or a purple hue. To yeah, it. it's pink light. Ugh. There's a pink light Look bulb in here. Okay. Oops. So is this a vibe you're going for on the podcast? Or are you guys fucking serious? This here? guy was talking about us. He's never seen pink light. He's like, are you in a sound stage? <laughs> are you at Disneyland? What is the pink? How did you get it? And this guy, this guy made fun of us and did a whole episode about us when we haven't even listened to this. We should review this one day. Is this a vibe you're going for on the podcast? They're blown this away. Like house- this is a podcast vibe. Yeah. My house is not. <laughs> My apartment is not like lit with pink bulbs. I think my boyfriend would kill me if that was the case. Okay. Um, yeah, I keep, it's pretty. Oh yeah, cause pink, uh, men hate pink. <laughs> These people are so outdated and lousy and low rent. It's unbelievable that they're even in the same universe as anyone we know. Gender, gender neutral, it's a lot of grays. Um, yeah, black and white. I mean, yeah. What? At the risk of doxing you, are you in <laughs> Look or a different borough? Um, borough? No, Westchester. I've said that oh, before. Westchester. Okay. Yeah. This is their show. All right. Yeah. Because yes. I can't imagine what it's like to live in New York City right now. Oh, you can't. Yeah, you can't. If I tune in, there's 36 the viewers or 37. And here's the little chat. I write 37 viewers. 37. Because that's, if you didn't know, fucking pathetic. Frank Pellegrino is in the chat and he tries to pull a 2005 like style internet lie as if we're all brand new to the net. Wait till you see what this motherfucker says. Her boyfriend's in the chat and he panics when he sees that I'm exposing that they have 37, even though everyone could see the count. Red Bar is trolling. He knows Chrissy's show releases at 5 a.m. and gets most of its hits via audio. Lying to my face. He's willing to lie to my face with some sick 90s-style children's cope. So he's got two copes here. That it releases at 5 a.m. Well, release it at a better time. Okay. Then. And that it gets most of its hits via audio. Is if that explains anything. Also, you were watching anything. this live at night, so it doesn't release at 5 a.m. This guy, this fucking nerd, has the nerve to say this in the chat. Look at this. He's in the chat, too. This fucking nerd. And they're watching their premiere. This isn't live. They've pre-recorded it. They're playing it live and they all showed up to see how it how so there's really only 34 viewers yes three, three of, them. of them are them <laughs> and they've all turned out to watch themselves with an audience like as if it's premiere day they're in the valley <laughs> who are these podcasts comes in and he says this isn't live fyi to me he's saying that to me <laughs> so? and then i write i didn't know that back. I can't who are the these car. podcasts <laughs> Watch your fucking back. And I want you to carve that in your head backwards. So when you look in the mirror, you could see it every day. Watch your back. The stuff I'm going to be doing to you is going to be behind the scenes. You know, I got, I mean, I like Mike. I, I hope he continues with this fucking, you know, please, Mike, don't, don't let up on this idiot. Please do not. Because Lady Kmart he 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 deserves his comeuppance. He thinks he's so cool, and he's so not. He's a fucking loser who married a mom wife eight and a half years older than him in a shithole known as Rochester. I mean, it, it they don't have kids. He walks around in some stupid band, the Isotopes, with fucking green ties and fucking pens in it, and he thinks he's funny. It's amazing. He thinks he's actually funny. This guy is fucking clueless. I've never seen somebody this pathetic. And he really thinks he's happening. 
Don't fuck with my fucking Patreon. That's an act of violence. <laughs> Even when he gets mad, he sounds like a fucking, like a Karen. Karen. Sorry, Carl. I'd hate to get your panties up in a bunch. Maybe you should talk to your mom wife. Maybe she can make you some warm milk. <sighs> Bo Beardenton, thanks for the two bucks. KC is a terrible interview. Oh, God, yes. He is awful. Awful. Frank Futter. Thanks for the two bucks. John, what's your wardrobe pick routine? Great outfit. Well, thanks for asking. I just did the laundry. I look for something black. That's, you know, something that's not, because I was going to wear something that's a little green, like my war t-shirt. Why can't we be friends? 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 But the... Uh, then I that wouldn't mesh with the green screen. James O'Sullivan, 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 James O'Sullivan, O'Sullivan, hoorah. Mike David, also a big fan of Portillo's, great beefs. Boschetti Tooth Chad, you never record a stand up, the hated videos all. Yeah, I should do one. Boschetti Tooth Chad, you never, oh, I came in twice. Frank Footer. Thanks for the two bucks. Stuttering John, be careful. Red Bob buys the most fake views on YouTube. Uh, let's see. Bullshitty Tooth Chad. Lady K is still audio first, like the MP3 on your book. And that was an MP3. That's why it drives me nuts. He goes, it's an act of violence. Look, Carl, you put the book, just the MP3. The fucking link is in my fucking complaint to Patreon. When you clicked on it, it had a fucking... A, long, a thinny, skinny thing with the audio of my book. I clicked on it. My friend clicked on it. The book publisher clicked on it. And Audible clicked on it. Stop pretending you didn't do it. It, it just makes you foolish. The act of violence was not in me striking you for it. The act of violence was you putting it on there and trying to take money out of my fucking pocket, you scumbag. I can't believe anybody, anybody even, Bochetti Tooth Chad, you really give a fuck about Lady Kmart? The fuck is wrong with you? Keith Miller, thanks for the two bucks. John, this bearded Lady K is too late for brains. It's fucking awful. Bochetti Tooth Chad, thanks for the two bucks. It was a different time. John! Uh, Vegas Beer Sales, Jerry. Thanks for the two bucks. The isotopes copy another band. Lame. I know. Everything Carl does is a copy. Everything. And everything Shitwayer does is a copy of a copy. Just kidding. How fucking dare you? Message deleted. They're actually deleting my messages. It just said, watch your back and 37 viewers. They've deleted those. That couldn't have been on display. So there you go. Look at this cope from one of her fans. Yeah, because viewership means you're interesting. Um, what? A libertarian lark. Love that guy. Red Bar is trolling. He knows Chrissy's show releases and gets most of its hits via audio. I couldn't believe it. That to me is straight up appalling. And we're gonna watch what Stuttering John has to say about her. Remember, they did a weird interview where Chrissy was being pretty shitty to another fucking loser. Is this whole thing going to be about Trump? Loser? Or... Uh, if you really don't want to talk about it, I just figured. Um, no, no, I, 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 I thought you had done. I thought you had dabbled occasionally in stand up. So I dabbled occasionally. Really? <laughs> yeah, I didn't know I, it was if it was a thing you were really doing or not. And... I've been doing stand up for 20 years. I don't oh, dabble. OK. But you know, Chrissy, to say I dabbled in stand up is so disrespectful. I haven't been disrespectful to you at all. <laughs> what the fuck? And yet you disrespect me and say I. Oh, dabbled. I, I didn't. I. I mean, I could. Come on, Mike. Let's like them all. Main thing, honestly. I, I dabbled in stand up. Okay. 
or we don't like this guy at all either. Here's Stuttering John on I Chrissy. Don't like me, you know, Mike. it's funny. I'm getting trashed by this chick. Look at this. What's the name? Uh, Dum Gums. Dum Gums! Gummy Mare. Gummy Mare! <laughs> big, 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 huge gums. It's really weird. She's a nobody. She's a nobody. She's got these gums. Big, gnarly gums. Yes! <laughs> he hates her. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You don't want to go to that White Plains Comedy Club. Heard it's a horrible place. And that's what I hear. <laughs> I personally wouldn't go to. That's somewhere they yeah, go. I don't know. Look at this. Someone said she's selling T-shirts with my name on it. But she only claimed to fame me. <laughs> this is what that's people pathetic. think my real personality is, bro. <laughs> okay. Very nice, Chrissy. We think so little of you. We should really do something to her in the coming days. Hey, look. I, I, I'm still a fan of, uh, oh, this is what they say, stuttering John. Are you, uh, you guys ready to let your hair down and have a little fun? No, no I'm not watching this blind Mike guy. It's fucking annoying, but, but I, I look, I like Mike and I think he's entertaining. He does a good job. I don't know why he, I don't know why he called me a loser, but I don't, it's fine. You know, oh, this is great. Uh, uh, this is, um, Lady Kmart. I love this girl. She hates this my movie so much. How- this 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 girl hates my movie so much. It's hysterical how much she hates it. Like it's it makes me laugh in a way because she's just she's so repulsed by my movie. I'm glad I could elicit such a negative reaction. How John really wrote this movie to be his fantasy life of himself. He wishes that somebody would have come to his rescue in the same way that he comes to this kid's rescue. He also wishes he was picked out because he stuttered. Yeah. That's not the only reason. <laughs> and this is such a... Oh, really? How do you know, Carl? Carl, how do you even know that I was picked on? How do you know anything about me, Carla? How? How do you know anything? Seriously. Lame interpretation of how kids bully a kid oh really like you should know in rochester you you say in rochester is the epicenter of real life are you fucking with me it's not even close to reality all right so here's one of my big problems with the movie i'm sorry i'm cutting ahead no go for it so stuttering john melendez makes it a point to defend a stuttering kid yeah and that's like one of his big things in life is like you don't make fun of people who stutter but then his best buddy hooks up with a girl who has who's cross-eyed and he just goofs on her to her face. Okay, okay. Now, I'm going to ask all of you, how am I goofing on her? This happened to me in college. I had a professor at Nassau Community College. And she had this eye that looked the other way. So when I would ask her a question, she would look and I would be like this. I didn't know. I'm like, what the fuck is she looking at? But I wasn't goofing on her. I just didn't know, like, like if she was looking at me. So all I do right now is the same thing. I don't know if she's looking at me or not. It's not goofing on her, but it's funny. For being cross-eyed. <laughs> nice to meet you. This is another example of how John really wrote this movie to be his fantasy life of You know, this girl's great because she hates my movie so fucking much. Uh, here, let me... It's really funny to watch. Um, I'm so happy uh, that I, I got such a... Look... Oh, bad reaction. Look, she's so, oh. she's so <laughs> she's so angry at at that at me for this movie. I love this. This makes my day. And don't and stay tuned. I know Brandon's going on in 18 minutes. Well, he's always late. 20 minutes. I'm gonna sing my new silent mic song. But I love this woman because she hates my movie so bad that I must have done something right. If I could piss this Karen off, Karen, then I did something right. Uh, why did I have to watch this movie ever? Why, why does this movie exist? Uh, why? I'm in 
sound, and I saw one comma, two comma, many. It is directed by Michael De Lorenzo. Who is this guy? Why did he choose to take this job as directing? Anyway, it's also written by John Melendez, a uh, stuttering John. Oh boy. Anyway, and if you haven't seen this movie, I will spoil it for you. This was requested by a Patreon. If you'd like to fast track a movie review request, you can do that at patreon.com slash ASC presents. Oh no, this is torture. Anyway, on with the review. If you haven't seen it, spoilers. I love that she hates it so much. This very simple premise. And this is the entire premise throughout the rest of the movie. What if stuttering John is like, I want to have a threesome. And this, this rest of the movie is about him trying to get w- with two other women. First of all, it's Thomas Burns. I'm playing a character. Second of all, what the fuck is with your eye shadow? Holy shit. And it's like... I love that story. Yeah, I know this is 2008, but there's get a Tinder, dude. I mean, I know it didn't exist back then, but still. Dude, you- lay off the weed, dude. I don't... Okay, I gotta be flat out about this. This is the worst movie I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Worst in Velma. This is worst. Tell you what, I'll buy you a beer. Worst in Velma. Okay. Uh, so this movie, I have so many things. Like I have so many issues with it because <laughs> the, you have the beginning premise, and this movie is just like so disconnected in like the cuts like yeah i see motivated cuts but like first of all you don't know anything you're talking about it's not disconnected in the cuts and like midway through dialogue there's another cut to like another scene in a different place to like that is done all the time in cinema you dumb fuck like pick up the second half of that sentence and then it cuts to a different location it does that same thing over and over again it happens in this movie constantly and so basically uh, who is the main character's name who cares it's stuttering john this is basically his fan fiction that he wrote for himself and then directed a movie well he wrote this movie and asked somebody to direct it for him so he could have a fan fiction about it Okay. John Melendez, oh, fuck, fuck. A simple premise. And this is the entire... Yeah. Uh, so, this movie, I have so many things... Like, I have so many issues with it. You have so many issues, period. Like, you have the beginning premise, and this movie is just, like, so disconnected in, like, the cuts. Okay, like, yeah, that. Okay. I see motivated cuts cuts to a different location. It does that same thing over and over again. It happens in this movie constantly. And so, basically, uh, who is the main character's name? I'm okay. Burns. Stuttering John. This is Burns, meaning he burns. He burns himself. himself. And then directed a movie. Well, he wrote. You don't even know what. You don't even get the reason for the name. Thomas Burns. Burns. I get burned. You see, that's what they do in movies. I mean, direct in literature, him so he could have a fan fiction about it. I don't know. It seems like it's easier to just write a fan fiction. But anyway, basically, oh, I need to be in a threesome. He yeah. Having That's every guy's fun. dream, you idiot. That's every guy's dream. What are you, stupid? Girls want to be part of a threesome. And in this process, he finds a girlfriend who's totally open and down. He gets a girlfriend with the sole intent of being in a threesome with this chick which is why well, be in a relationship if you want to be so uh dismissive about this woman's feelings i mean she seems totally open to the idea she's like yeah i want to do this all this stuff yeah it happens it happens a lot you dumb fuck and then her rules are you can never talk about it you can never be with the same person again and just all these weird rules and it's like yeah maybe they happened in my real life you stupid animal <laughs> filthy animal sorry uh, this is hilarious because i don't think anyone has uh written this except for john because no one else would R- really 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 hey dummy maybe it happened in my real life 
Maybe I'm writing from my own experience. You stupid twit. Fucking hell. Come up with these stupid. Yeah, these stupid rules. Sorry. These stupid rules. Maybe they really happened. Maybe they did. Do you want me to give you names? <laughs> you idiot. Fuck. Do it again, John. Also, I got to give you a little of impression of stuttering John throughout this movie. And it's okay for me to make this impression because I'm autistic. It's all right. It's okay. So, oh, so now, how did I know? This movie. He's autistic. Like, now I'm going to get... Oh, Yeah. Well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a b -b person. Uh, yeah, I want to eat your p-word. Give me your p-word. When do I say that? Bleep those out, Dave. I uh, never say that. I swear in this review, but this movie got me so angry. And I say supposed to mainly because of my own preference. But, uh, well, anyway, this movie just made me go, oh, why am I saying this? Why I love the anger. I love how much he hates this movie. This is the best review I've ever gotten. Luckily, it's only an hour and a half, but unfortunately, it's an hour and my half of my life gone. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. There wasn't one redeeming thing besides the end? Completely gone. No more life included. In no, no, I can't use that time for anything else now. I could have made some cookies. Well, how about the blooper reel at the end? But no. I had to watch this terrible movie. So you know what happens during this terrible movie? So he hires a prostitute, right? Oh, I'm going to hire this hooker. And I'm going to hire her so she can like, uh, you know. Maybe it happened. You ever think of that? You ever think that maybe this happened in my real life? Like we can have a big old free something. And oh, you know what happens? Oh, I don't have enough money. Oh, I have to go down to the ATM. Maybe that really happened. Do, 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 do. Going down to the ATM. And then you know what happens? Oh, well, I need to get more money from the ATM. Do, 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 do. I need to spend more money to have more time with her. Oh. Whose impression are you doing now? Oh, time to go down to the ATM again. Do, 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 do. And then, terrible, three solid minutes. Three solid minutes of shit joke. Three solid minutes. Yes! I love shit jokes. <laughs> Three minutes and like 10 seconds. I counted. I put a timestamp on it. No <sighs> I love it. Man, you hated this movie so much, you timestamped the amount of shit minutes. It was the worst thing ever. I had to take my headphones off. And in order to get the timestamp, I had to go through it twice. Mm. Well, anyway, this was the worst thing. <laughs> you mean you, ha you hated it so much you watched it twice? Okay, okay, I'm buying this one, sweetheart. And you know what happens during those three minutes? Let's be honest, you loved it. And you also love hating it. Minutes. Oh, my stomach is feeling rumbly. Oh, look at the corn dogs and oh, the hot dogs that I had earlier today. And it's like, this isn't movie making. Well, you're just going to say a thing and then you're going to like cut to like, uh, like, a, like a family guy gag style of like, oh, we're going to look at another thing that was not where I'm at right now. And then go back to where I'm at right now. And he's like running and then he goes into the stall and then there's just shit noises. And I don't like... <laughs> This lady's a gem. I love this lady. Let me buy you a corn dog. Those. Who thought this? No, I don't need to ask who thought this was a good idea. I know who thought it was a good idea. It was John Melendez, and he sucks. This is a terrible movie. This is <laughs> awful. This isn't filmmaking. This is not good. Not good at all. Who? Why? Why did you decide to take this job? Michael De Lorenzo? Oh, does he have, like, some personal favorite? By the way, Michael De Lorenzo was a choreographer for um, Beat It by uh, the Michael Jackson song. He also was uh, Private Santiago in A Few Good Men. Oh, I want to make a movie, says Stuttering John. I, I want to make, make, make a movie. That's Stuttering John in 2008. And well, she's then, making fun of me now. Am I allowed to make fun of her? I don't know. I'll, I'll get beaten up for it.
one's like, yeah, I'll help you with that. All of it's bad. None of it's good. The only praise, the only praise I can give this movie is the lighting is half decent. Half decent. I can see what's happening. It's unfortunate I can hear what's happening. <laughs> so props, I guess, for audio. Congrats. Uh, I thought it was for the right, lighting. And then this movie ends, basically. He doesn't get to have the threesome. And then this movie... I do have the threesome. What are you talking about? I have it a, a bunch of times. It is really hard to keep track of what happens, like little bits in between, because of how often it cuts from thing to thing in between his... I'm sorry you couldn't pay attention. Maybe he's up on the weed. In the middle of his sentences, with every word, to so like I don't know, to demonstrate. Oh, why can't you just be in a scene? He's also the worst actor that I've ever seen. He's not even acting. Really? Then why did I get a great agent, one of the top managers, uh, and Wayne Rice from Do As My Car loved it, loved my acting. Thought I was the next coming of Ben Stiller. Is laughing mainly because of how terrible his acting was. I only laughed when I was like, "This is the worst thing ever." I have to laugh because hey, at least I got to laugh. The only way I could really make sure that I don't want to undead myself during this in process of this movie. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it should ever exist. I don't think you should go see it. I don't think you should even acknowledge that it exists. And I didn't know. It existed until Carl from uh, Who Are oh, These Podcasts is one, one of my, my favorite, favorite podcasts. Is a review on it. Well, Maybe that says a lot about your review. Alerted me to the presence of this movie. So, so in other words, you went in tainted. Well, that's a great reviewer. Go in with the tainted fuck. So you're going in after you're hearing your favorite podcast, which, by the way, is ridiculous if it's Lady Kmart. But or he's already told you it sucks. So you go in with that premise. What a great reviewer. Man, no wonder why you're sitting on a fucking, uh, fucking old pleather chair in front of a green screen. You know Gene Siskel, you know Roger Ebert, and you know Richard Roper. You're fucking Richard Doper. And I was like, oh no, how bad does it have to be? And it's bad. It's 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 the worst movie I've seen yet. Uh, I'm sure there's probably worse movies out there. But I don't know how there could be a worse movie out there. There, This isn't a movie. This is somebody's fan fiction, poorly written fan fiction, and then realize. Can we say fan fiction again? I want to see the storyboards. I want to see the storyboards of, like, uh, mid-dialogue to, like, to the picture scene. Oh, I have to film in, like, a party now. Well, John Melinda says, and then I ate the liquor. <laughs> and then, like, next cut... And then I slobbered that liquor all over her. Uh, so something like that. This movie was that never vulgar. happened. Vulgar. And it wasn't funny and vulgar. It was just vulgar, vulgar. It was gross, disgusting. A vulgar display of power. Man, curse! Not a fun movie time at all. Avoid this movie at all costs. There is no character progression. There's no character development. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. I learned my lesson. Untrue. And there are a few different changes in character. Believe me, I know about that. I went to film school! Well, actually, I... Even Jeffrey Ross has a character change. Ernie! I lie. There is some character development. Oh, in... see? Yeah. I, see, I beat you to the punch. The little what in the little uh, friend, I guess girlfriend that John Melendez has during the movie. After he comes back and the time with the hooker is up, she's like, you know, I'm gonna go with her. And it's like she's a walking, working woman. She has. No, she wasn't. Sandra Taylor played the hooker. Hudson Lake played the fucking singer that we ended up with. You dumb fuck. There's other clients to attend to. You can't just like be there you're not you're also not a prostitute okay you mm, you can't just like tag along with her while she's out working i don't know i'm i've never been on the street i don't know how street prostitution works but i just think i know more about street prostitution than john melendez does. really 
Well, I don't know about that, honey. It's cheese. <sighs> because in this movie, they go out and like they are like dating now. And it's like, you know, I think the prostitute probably has like other people to have sex with for money. Instead of, I don't know, having a friend that is a girl that gives you no money. I don't know. If I was the prostitute, I wouldn't be hanging out with John Melendez's girlfriend at all after this hour is done. I gotta give this movie a solid... I don't know what to give this movie. It's so bad. But yet, I have to leave some room. It's a one. It's a one. It's a solid one. It's a one of a movie. I only give it a one because it looks okay, halfway decent. And when I say it looks decent, I mean I could literally see it. Like, it's not like dark, like an HBO property. It's not like dark like the end of Game of Thrones. Like, I, I can see what's happening. Oh, geez. It's a solid one for everything else to being terrible about it, though. If you like this review, watch another one. YouTube really likes that. You can also like, comment, subscribe, I gotta make share another to movie. see with everyone. This you know, the hard. ultimate goal of this channel is for me to become an expert movie reviewer. So if I haven't reviewed it on the channel, there's a chance I haven't even seen it at all. If you'd like to request a movie in the comments below, you can do that. You can fast track a movie review. Well, don't Patreon. come in with a tainted. For you can't be a good movie reviewer. Review Three dollars a month to have to draw Pokemon tutorials. All at Patreon.com. You're gonna come in with a tainted like opinion already. Grindiness. You go to this link tree to find ways you can help support the daily grindiness. Go to this link tree. And until next time, I'm in South Saw. I'll see you later, my South Crease on bacon bits. Oh jeez, I hope no one thinks I'm as bad as Stuttering John because Stuttering John is terrible. This is the worst movie I've ever seen. If this is a product of Stuttering Stuttering John, I don't want this to want me to be equivalent to this because this is trash. I want to be. I gotta have her on my show. I, I strive to be better than Stuttering John, even though I never knew who he was before a couple of years ago. I strive to be better than him. He's my entire life goal is not to be him. <laughs> Do not feel like Stuttering John. This is a terrible movie. Never watch this movie. I love you. I love you. I want you to be a guest on my, on my show. Who is this girl? What's her name? How do I book her? I got to get her on. I got to get her on my show. Someone tell me how to get this girl on my show. Oh, that was awesome. That's the, that's the best review ever. Are you kidding me? Holy shit. I loved it. Fucking hell. That was fucking awesome. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> I guess you're just going to have to find out. Oh, God. All right. <laughs> okay. Hey, hold Ooh. on. I want to show you. Come on. You don't even like the blooper reel? Come on. How about the blooper reel? Hey, that's, here's me with my wife. There we go. There we go. Look at his acting. This is stellar. Look how beautiful my ex-wife was. You kidding me? Hi. 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 Oh my God, Derek. Hi. Uh, what are you doing here? Thank you. <laughs> hey, boy. Whoa. That was weird. Oh, you don't understand. Because you played my therapist. What's up? Well, I've been trying to reach you, but your phone's disconnected. So you're you're kind of you gave me your address. So I came by. Oh, what's going on? There's a commercial that you're perfect for. So I was in the neighborhood, so I brought it by for you here. Well, thanks a lot. That's really nice of you. This is like at four in the morning before I had to go to the. That's the same. Maybe eight in the morning before I. Thanks a lot. Cool. <laughs> All right. Well, take care. Take care, Tom. Hey. Do you want to get a cup of coffee or something with me? You want to get a cup of coffee with me? I, I, I haven't showered in like three days, three weeks. Oh, come on. I mean, it's it's, it's just isn't a good time. I, you, you know. Don't make me beg. 
Well, I'll make you beg. No, I'm not going to make you beg. That was horrible. My ex-wife was. I know how to pick him. That's not a, not a freaking uh, wife bomb, Lady K. I did. I don't anymore. He kept trying to get me to sleep with other women. Really? Really. What an asshole. I guess the moral of the story is, if you love what you got, and you got what you love, don't fuck it up. There you go. Hey. How can I? <sighs> I'm gonna forget it again. You're not sure. Thomas, think about it. I just forgot my lines. <laughs> Excuse me, asshole. I mean, sir. 